Okay, welcome to uh, Aircraft Investigation, AZ-2063. I believe this is week, this is uh, day seven. Uh, today, we're actually going to give you a plane at the Emory-Riddle Crash Lab. Uh, we have gone over Accident Investigation Board, the background, how to investigate it. We actually took a tour of Emory-Riddle last week, and uh, everybody was handed out a Brochures. Every every group have one of those handouts of how to investigate. Everybody have one. Bring it tonight. Every group needs one. Uh, this uh, tonight there will be two weeks, two weeks, two hours of investigation. The first hour we're going to invest. Split you guys into groups. You're going to be assigned your crash. There's actually three crashes. So with four groups in this class, two of you guys will have the same crash, uh, along with. Uh, groups from other classes, my South Flight and my hybrid class, and you'll actually be given a uh, crash with an investigating expert there, probably a master's student in safety investigation, to answer your questions. The first hour is going to be very unorganized and chaotic. You're going to have this crash, and you're going to be sitting there, and you're going to be bored. You shouldn't be bored. You should be following the handout, locating the four different parts of the crash, lo locating all the different parts of the aircraft and figuring out what's going on. This is the first part of the mishap investigation just like when you see a crashed plane in a in a field. The first hour is going to be very chaotic and you're not going to know what's going on. You need to identify all the parts of the plane. Someone needs to have a notepad or notebook, take all these notes down for your individual group and you should be asking questions as to why the plane crashed. Does it look at the impact angle? Remember he talked about the impact angle last week. Is there a smoking hole? Is it just one little uh, hot, one little spot where it went straight in vertically? Or was it a low impact angle? Yes, ma'am. Should we take pictures of the crash? Yes. The first hour, I would suggest you take pictures. When you take pictures of the crash, just like some of the ones I showed you online, make sure that you have something there to show the scale, like a pencil. We need to be quiet over there, guys. Do you understand? I'm going to stand you all attention unless your group is quiet. Do you understand? You need to have a, a pencil or something to show scale. Okay, so when you have a piece of metal, okay, take a picture with something next to it so you can see how big it is. That makes sense, otherwise you won't be able to understand. So, that's a good question. So you'll have the first hour to sit out there and find the crash, see what's going on, start asking questions. And then, after about an hour out there, we'll take a break. We'll probably walk back to the classroom. At that point, I will break the groups up into your individual crashes, and I'll hand you pieces of paper. And the pieces of paper are sort of like a uh, <laughs> time travel. It'll sort of be like you've already investigated for two or three weeks and you've produced and you found these pieces of paper. One might be a map, one might be documentation the guy was drinking the night prior, the other one might be some air traffic control witnesses. You'll have witnesses like you've interviewed witnesses. I will give you these pieces of paper for your individual crash. And then you take your questions that you've had before and your Pieces of paper, some of the papers, may, one crash maybe have four pieces of paper. Other pieces of paper, other crash maybe have 20 pieces of paper. You need to match these up and see if they answer your questions. And then you're welcome to go back out to the crash with more information and look at the crash from that perspective. You're going to have two hours. It's going to take some time. You need to be writing down all these questions. If you uh, have any any questions about the investigation, remember that online I have uploaded uh, not only our, our complete talks and, and briefings here, but you can type in YouTube Prescott J. Rotsi, go to the YouTube channel, and you can see all the entire investigation briefings that Mr. Waldog gave you last week. Uh, there's actually about five or six videos of different links. When I record it with the handheld, the, the HD camera, it breaks it up for me. But what he, when he gave you that talk last week, 
That is sort of like the product that you guys are going to produce in two weeks. Okay? Your assignment is on Moodle or MS and hybrid. And if you go to week 11, oh, by the way, I have links to all the videos that I just showed you there on YouTube that, that was the uh, briefing that you guys got last time. But let's see, so this is actually day, uh, day seven. Your actual product that you'd have to produce and you have to submit to me this week is your organization of your group. Today, you will be organizing and investigating your group. Your group is, this class has got four, four members, what, five, sorry, five members in each group. Other classes may be three or four, depending on how it works out. But in this, you need to go through and think about our first discussion about this, the Safety Investigation Board. You need to determine your positions in your group. And of course, you can have multiple ones. Let's talk about something topical. Matter of fact, uh, right now, um, what is the big crash that everybody's talking about on the, uh, on the news? On the news. And what is interesting, exactly what you said, Cody, uh, Malaysian Flight 370 is exactly how that flight will be known forever. Did you notice how uh, when my business <laughs> when they actually started when he actually started talking about his crashes and all of his experience uh, he was referring to it you know with United Flight 70 you know uh, US Air 120 so this one for your whole life you will uh, be as old as I am and you'll remember Malaysian Flight 370 because Malaysia will never have another Flight 370 once it's crashed and been in the news. Uh, there's something very spectacular, uh, changing, that was announced this morning by the, I guess the president, uh, the president, the uh, actual um, prime minister. Why don't we listen to him? I was briefed by representatives from the UK Accidents Investigation Branch or AAIB. And they informed me that Imaset, the UK company that provided the satellite data, which indicated the northern and southern corridors, has been performing further calculations on the data using a type of analysis never before used in an investigation of this sort. They have been able to shed more light on MH370's flight path. Based on their new analysis, Inmarsat and the AAIB have concluded that MH370 flew along the southern corridor and that its last position was in the middle of the Indian Ocean west of Perth. This is a remote location far from any possible landing sites. It is therefore with deep sadness and regret that I must inform you that according to this new data, flight MH370 ended in the southern Indian Ocean. We will be holding a press conference tomorrow with further details. In the meantime, we wanted to inform you of this new development at the earliest opportunity. We share this information out of a commitment to openness and respect for the families. Okay, 
What did this, uh, what does this mean? Slice. Is there is there any survivors? No, probably not. no. So this is the first time they definitively have said that all those conspiracy theories of landing in China, landing in you know other places, and refueling, it's it's over. So that somehow they've uh, used new technology with satellite, which is pretty amazing actually, and this uh, very remote area, and realize that there is no chance of it having survived. And this affects, what, 250, 230 uh, people. So that was a pretty significant event. Let's say every one of you guys are the president of the board. Who are you going to have on your safety board for the Malaysian Flight 370? Prime Minister. The Prime Minister would not be on the board. The President Obama is not going to be on the board, right? But who would be on your board? What kind of experts do you need? Satellite. Satellite imaging experts, great idea. Who else? Submarine experts. Why submarine? In case it's in the middle of the ocean. Well, trying to find the find the information, you might want somebody who who has deep sea. Yeah, because you're actually trying to find the information. Yes, good point. How about determine the crash? Determine who else would be on the board? Geography. Pilot. Pilot. Who else? Someone who knows the world good. Like, I don't know. Geography. Yeah, geography person. Or someone who knows that area, maybe an air traffic controller person, a pilot who flies in that area a lot. Yes? Yeah, so, to reenact the flight, like a so maybe a computer expert, exactly, who maybe knows about triple sevens and the expertise of the triple seven. That would be excellent. Yes? Somebody who like studies the landscapes underwater so they can try to figure out where it crashed. Like okay, because you're tr still trying to find the facts, right? You're still trying to Discover facts or findings. What about uh, the people who died on this plane? Who, what, where countries were they from? America, I think three. Malaysia. Mainly, they were Malaysia, but mainly they came from China. China. They were going to Beijing. I think 150. Of the, so if you were having this board, you would want to have a Chinese representative, Malaysian representative, American rep. These are the people who perished in this crash. And consequently, these people represent the interest of their countries. Okay? What about the, who built the plane? Boeing. Boeing. Probably want to have a Boeing expert on there in case there's a, you know, a problem with the plane. So these are what you need to think about this afternoon when you go get assigned your plane, is you're going to be looking at it, and you're going to go, wow, this is a big mess. I mean, planes create huge messes when they crash. But now you're going to be given the facts, you're going to be given the piece of paper, and you go, yes, ma'am. Are the papers you're giving us, like, the real information? Oh, yeah. These are real crashes. I mean, these are real crashes. They, uh, some of them killed people, some of them didn't. Yes, exactly. These are real crashes. And so, then tomorrow, we're going to be meeting in room 104. Okay? Room 104, at least for the next two days, Tuesday and Wednesday. You're going to organize your group. You're going to come up with, somebody needs to be taking notes and all this stuff, and you're going to come up with your questions. What you're going to be producing is what is the online here. Everybody here in Prescott High School, do you know, <laughs> that everybody here in Prescott High School has an email account with Google Mail. Does everybody know that? Yes, sir. And it says PrescottSchools.com, even new guys, okay, you have your own Gmail account. And so all your products from this exercise is going to be via Google Docs, okay? Everybody know what Google Docs are? Yes, sir. Yes or no? Who does not know what Google Docs is? Let me show you. Google Docs is an online way for you to create documents and if you go into your email which everybody has an email like this you come over to the right you click on this funky uh, squid, grid and you actually go to your different types of apps in Google one is called Drive so you can go into your Google Drive and you can create these documents that you can share with your 
group members. I have done this for years in other classes, but I want to make sure everybody here knows how to use Google Docs. Let's say I want to create a document. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to say, this is my notes for my crash, for my Cessna crash, for my Cessna crash. <laughs> How do you spell Cessna? S-E-S-S-N-A crash. Okay, and then I have this, this document. And it is my notes that I've done. You can also do this for you can also do this for uh, a, when you create, you can do a presentation, which will be what you're doing. You also have to produce a presentation, a document that has the finding, cause, and recommendations. This is what you're going to be producing. When you produce this, you choose whether or not to share this with your peers. And so you have your documents, and you create Let's see, where's my untitled document? Untitled document. Here's my untitled document. And you choose whether or not to share this with your, your peers. And so you go on and you actually designate the people in your group as those who you share it with. When you share it with them, you can edit or you can view. I suggest everybody edit. And therefore, this one document can be used by everybody to keep notes and keep track of stuff. I want everybody to use this skill. So I will grade you on not only what you put in, excuse me, I, I won't grade you on what you put in, your peers will. I will grade you whether or not you use Google Docs successfully. Yes, sir. Finds the presentation is being. I will get there. Good answer. Where would that question be? Where would that answer be? On Moodle, where your assignment is, okay? So I suggest you exchange your Gmail accounts with everybody, make sure what's going on, and then you start assigning who is what on your safety investigation board, okay? And what kind of people you need. Tonight, you will start phase two. You'll actually be assigned, you assigned your crash site, you'll be able to go around for an hour and mess around and be confused and start writing down questions, and then I'll give you I won't give you the answers, I'll give you more facts, more findings, I'll give you more information, and you're still writing tons and tons of questions. You know, yes, the guy was drinking, but how many drinks did he have? Uh, yes, they were given divorce, but was she having a problem with her husband or not? Was she thinking about this? Was it not a factor? And the bottom line was today, you need to investigate what to investigate and make assignments, split them up. Who's going to be the doctor on the, the group? Well, you know what? He needs to look at psychologically. Was he having problems or she having problems? There's an air traffic controller. What, did, he, did he know about the, the mountain in front of him that he ran into? Did he have the correct maps? Do you need charts? You need to start saying, what do you need for your group? And I will give you those products. Or I will say, you know what? Your group did a good job. You investigated the map that he had, and it was fantastic. So the map wasn't a problem in this particular crash. What you're giving back as a presentation is phase three, which is what you're producing via Google Docs. You're going to be producing three things, essentially. You're going to be producing everything, all your evidence, all your findings, what, what you have your questions are. And remember last week, uh, Mr. Waldock, who who uh, is very involved in this Malaysian crash, giving his opinion. Yes, ma'am. Depending on the flight, do you need a meteorologist or a person like You can certainly choose a meteorologist if you need a meteorologist. No Thank problem you. at all. You're welcome to do that. Yes, that's a great, great idea. But what you're going to be doing is you're going to be producing what, remember he said he likes to do investigations about what did not happen, what was not a factor. So you're going to list a gazillion things, two dozen, three dozen questions. Was weather a factor? Was a map a factor? Was drinking a factor? Was there a divorce a factor? Did the plane crash? Did it run out of gas? Did they get the wrong gas? Did the mechanic install something improperly? All these crazy questions, and you go, no, 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 no. Oh, you're right. They put in the wrong fuel. 
Well, guess what? That was a factor. So you do everything by elimination of what can happen. You're going to investigate similar crashes. Uh, Cessna, bad fuel. Ding, 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 ding. Cessna, crash, bad fuel. Has this ever happened before? Well, you know what? Maybe he did the same thing somebody else did. That's the type of thing you're going to look at. And you're going to list your findings. Hold it, guys. Let's review. What are findings? Facts. Findings are facts. Yes. This is what happened from beginning to the end. He crashed into a mountain and all were killed. He landed in a field and walked away. The plane was destroyed. What's a cause? The reason. The reason. The one fact that if you take out that fact, the plane would still be flying and everybody would be alive. What's a recommendation? Put in proper gas. The recommendation is how do you fix the accident so that you prevent other accidents. So you're going to be creating all of these finding causes and recommendation and list the recommendations and the rationale of why you're doing this. This comes from the findings and in your investigation. What you're producing for us, which you will actually present, are three things. You're producing, first of all, a Google Doc that has all this information, 12 font, all this information. You're also producing a presentation, a slideshow presentation, 10 slides minimum. That's minimum. If you get going with pictures and maps, you can do a lot more, but just 10 minimum that basically summarizes the Google Doc so that you can put this on CNN. And you see this, just like this prime minister, do you know, what do you think is going to happen in one year when they figure out what's going on? They're going to have a presentation. If you all have looked at some of the, uh, the links I had for extra credit that had to do with the Columbia or Challenger crash, they have a summary of the accident. What you heard Mr. Waldock do last week, that is your presentation. Boom, here's the recreation. This is why it happened. That is what you're going to be presenting. And then one or two, I don't care, all of you, I don't care, are going to create a recreation of the accident from a first-person perspective. I was the fisherman sitting on the lake, and I saw this plane crashing up there, and it crashed. I was the pilot. I have come back to tell you I shouldn't have drank those 10, 10 beers and going drinking. This isn't acting. This is a recreation in first person that will be done after the presentation, or actually some groups have put it inside the presentation, want to, however you want to do it, creatively. But you must dress up. It must be in character. Uh, I was the maintenance guy who, who was filling up the gas tank of the Cessna in the Bahamas with this, with this uh, movie star, and she was, she was who's a movie, movie star, and she was yelling at the pilot to put all her stuff on, and gosh, she was really in a bad mood that day, and the pilot didn't want to do it, but she forced him to do it. She said she wasn't going to pay him, and guess what? They flew off the Bahama runway and crashed and burned. That's a, that's an in-person type uh, presentation. Yes, ma'am. For the stress up part, because it's like supposedly supposed to be on CNN, can we do professional wear? You can do whatever you want to, yes. Yes, but I mean, I want it to be a person involved in the crash. It's not a reporter who's gathering information. It's like they come back. One time we had the <laughs> pilots of crashes past, and he was a dead pilot that came back to tell you why he shouldn't have killed himself, right? Or one time we had it was the son of the pilot. My dad was really fired up, and he ended up flying into the thunderstorm and killed himself because he was rushing home, and it's terrible because it ruined all our lives. You know, I don't care. Just think about it, okay? But this is part of your creativity. So we actually go through the facts, the document, just like you're presenting a paper, okay, organized. Then we go through actual presentation. You want to do public speaking, okay? And then we have your creative presentation. You can be one person, you can be everybody. It doesn't matter to me a bit. This is a synopsis of your entire year of science of flight. And this will all be videotaped and put up online. Your peers, everybody in this room, Boche will be grading Cadet Barrios. You'll be grading each other as well as Sal. You'll be grading Sal, my Sal flight, as well as Hybrid. You'll all grade each other. The one thing I'm requiring, though, 
positively is phase four. And this is because I have dealt with this for eight years. And guess what? You won't believe it. Sometime, rarely, <laughs> my cadets are lazy and they do not practice. So I'm going to give you an entire day in here and in the other where you're going to stand up and you're going to look at this film and you're going to practice, but I am not going to record. Or should I record it and let you look at it? I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we do it on time. Okay, but you're going to do it, but it's not going to be the one ready for prime time. But you'll probably do it in front of your peers. They'll give you constructive criticism. You'll accept them and you'll get better. But you absolutely must practice and present via Google Docs. Google Docs is that presentation. Okay, so that means that Melanie won't be having a little stick. Say, if I lose this stick, my whole you know group gets zero. No, it's going to be on the web on the Google Docs. You'll share it with me or you'll come in here and pull it up yourself. Okay. All right. So this all starts today. Tomorrow we will be in the lab. You'll be organizing. You'll be getting. You'll be looking at similar crashes. You'll be coming up with all your questions. You need to ask me questions written down. How about that? Hmm. Maybe you need to ask me questions via Google Docs. Okay. Sir, we have these seven questions that we need to research, and I say, okay, here's your answers. Yes, ma'am. What does ATC stand for? Air Traffic Control. People you talk to on the, to, on the radio. Maybe they were talking to Air Traffic Control, and he said for him to be at 7,000 feet, and he ran into an 8,000 foot mountain. So maybe the pilot was doing everything right. It was not pilot error. A lot of times it is. Yes, ma'am. So what you're saying by that, like sometimes it's the air traffic control centers that they give them wrong directions. Yes. There are two planes in the same area and get it mixed up in his head. Human error, not pilot error, could be human error. Maybe in this Malaysian 370, not to create a, uh, another <laughs> conspiracy theory, but maybe when he did the turn, he was given direction by the air traffic controller. Looks like we'd find out by now, but that could be part of an investigation, right? That could be part. Or maybe when you're loading the plane, that we talked about the, Mah the Bahama crash, maybe the pilot had a co-pilot. He goes, hey, you know, I loaded it on. It's no big deal. Maybe the co-pilot made the problem with the weight and balance and put too much, plane, too much weight on there. Pilot, wouldn't, pilot didn't know. Maybe the, maybe the load master, if you have a problem with weight shifting, or, heck, on this uh, Malaysian 370, one of the ideas, we had lithium batteries loaded up, right? And they had, what, 300s, hundreds of lithium batteries. Maybe they exploded. If you have a loading problem on the plane, who should be on your investigation team? Load master. A load master, a loading person, okay? If you have batteries that could possibly explode, who might be on the team? Bomb a squad. A bomb squad or a battery expert or somebody who built the batteries, yes. So seeing as how we only have five people, will you help us determine which are the most five important people? No, you can have multiple jobs. Oh, well, okay. You see what I'm saying? You may have 10 or 15 people that you need on the team, and Buell does three. You, I mean, just split it up. I mean, again, you're, you're trying to do this a year event in <laughs> two weeks, you know, and I'm going to help you as much as possible. Or you go, sir, this thing, we need a weapons officer. We need a weapons expert because they were carrying... Whatever, <laughs> C4. Carrying guns, he was gun run, gun runner. And I'll go, you know what? That's a great idea. Write that down. That would be one of your findings. We investigated it, but you know what? This crash wasn't a problem. So then you just did something, right? You investigated. I'm telling you, it wasn't a factor in this crash. Is there one answer to all these crashes? No. No. These two teams may have the same Cessna crash. This team may come forward and say, you know what? It was because he had the wrong map and he ran into the mountain. And guess what? You went through the findings, and you know what? I might be tricky. I'll tell you. I'm putting this online. I might be tricky. I might say, yes, guys, the map he had was out of date. So guess what? You guys found out that he had the wrong map and he ran into the mountain. This dude, his map was perfect, <laughs> okay? And the person he was talking to on the radio, he was drunk. So, hmm, maybe he ran into the mountain because of, you know, of, of other issues. So you may have different answers to the same 
crash. So do not sit there and go, oh, we're going to get in trouble. As long as you document it with your findings, as long as you give me a presentation, as long as you come out, yes, he was drunk when he was talking on the phone, or no, his map was perfect, then we'll figure this out, okay? We'll have different issues. And oh, by the way, with we have three, four teams here. We have three in South, that's seven. We have six or seven in hybrid, that's 13 teams. And we have three crashes. You're going to have as much as four teams on each crash. So you will get different ideas and different questions. Think about what you're going to ask, okay? All right. Uh, in summary, tonight is when you get your assignment. Tonight is when you need to organize your team, come up with who's on, on the group, and what kind of questions. What, what are you going to investigate? You're going to have an hour to look at the stuff. It's going to be a bit boring, but you're going to be keep working. Somebody keep taking notes, be in charge, and then we're going to come in, we're going to give you papers, and you're going to have the opportunity. You don't have to go out and look at the plane again. You can, or you can just sit around and start reading the papers and coming up with questions. Tomorrow, this class is going to be in the computer lab for the next two days. We'll see how things go. Uh, you realize Thursday, Friday this day, Thursday is uniform day, right? Yes, sir. And then Friday is the uh, same thing, basically. You guys will be doing different stuff with the uh, other class on Friday because I am not here. I have to go down the valley for the uh, jazz. But next week, we'll have computer time. We'll have class time. But you guys, if you do not know how to use Google Docs, work with your buddies and figure this out. You've got to be able to know how to share stuff online. Okay, round the room. Let's see. Where's my teens? Now that you can look up here on the uh, thing. Can we talk with the other All right, just, just a second, just a second. All right, this is MS. Uh, and i got to come smaller for it to look good, right? MS1, Team 1. Where's your Team 1? Okay, sir. Do you all have any questions? No, sir. At this point, okay? Team 2, Buell. you all got any questions? Spangler, you got any questions? Okay. Team three. Sure, sir. Do you all have any questions? Specifically at this point. Uh, team four. Yes, sir. You have a question? Okay, no questions right now. Okay. Well, we will uh, stop this and I will.